Hello, everyone. I don't know if that works properly, but I hope it did. Um, I'm Will, and joining me is Ian Gibson. Hello. He is here in the flesh. We will um, be playing. <laughs> I have good news. That intro sequence, it worked and it's lit. It did it work and it's lit? Okay. Good. Light. Lot? It's light. How do they light. keep say it nowadays? Light. Lighty. Yo, it's lighty, baby. Um, I WD-40'd my chair today, <gasps> so it is way less squeaky. I gotta find some more nook and crannies to WD-40, but way less squeaky. Excuse me? Like, there's so, like some of the like random bolts are squeaky. I'm sorry, could you say that phrase one more time? Some of the bolts are a little squeaky? No, you gotta... Yeah. Find all yep. the nooks and crannies? Yep. What's yep. wrong with that one? <sighs> Cranny sounds like grannies. You ever think about yeah. that? Yeah, like how grand, Granberry sounds like cranberry. Hello. I'm, um, anyways, I'm... this is Server Quest Live, which is basically the only version of Server Quest anymore. Uh, and we are playing doo -doo -doo -doo, RuneScape. Old school RuneScape. Circa, I think it's like 2007? Yes. Um, so I went, and, a little backstory here. I went and got my old RuneScape account. Got the wow. password recovered. And, wow, this game's loud. Uh, got the password recovered. Went to log in. Wouldn't let me log in because the account was banned. Got the account unbanned. Uh, and then finally logged in and all my cool stuff was there still. Uh, oh, really? Most of it useless. I thought, I thought they'd done a wipe at some point, but I guess not. No, so all my that's in the new RuneScape, but in old school RuneScape, you had to make a new account. New character. So, oh, okay. we're going to hit existing user here. We're going to say, oh, weird that it doesn't show my email address. Because I crossed it out. And we're going to hit log in, and hopefully the screen will get a lot bigger. Oh, by the way, we gotta we gotta pick the same server world three hundred one. Oh, what was I just on? Go, can you can you go look at the Twitch and go back like ten seconds? It says it in the bottom. Oh yeah. Left corner. Nope, camera's covering it. <laughs> Can't see it. No, it shouldn't just... be. Yeah, it is. The world world is in the bottom left, so. Yeah, but it's not that big. It's it was tiny on the screen, wasn't it? Oh, well, I'm just looking at it now. Let me... S yeah, How do back. you rewind? Oh, you know what? We can't rewind. Oh, YouTube, uh, I can't. YouTube, YouTube you can. I can't. I only say, because I think if I back out, I have to redo all this resizing, and I don't want to do that. 438. I'm looking for it. Okay, I'm going to create my little character here. It's got 300 people in it. That's good enough. Pretty. Oh, it's weird. Yeah, I tried to look for low, low server count. Uh, I'm afraid okay. that I might start playing this game. Oh, no. I played this. My friend, he used to sleep over, and we would get up at 6 a.m. and start playing RuneScape. Is this the first... Is this the first game on server quest where one of us has legitimately played it before yes oh i i checked today guess how old my account is um i'm gonna say 14 years old 15 years and six days wow i was wow. pretty impressed So how's it going on character creation? Good. I got some cool, weird, spiky hair. Cool. That's All right. I'm just chilling here, has. waiting for you on Tutorial Island. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, switch my hair to. Oh wow, there's like, there's like 3D in this game. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So have you ever played this or no? No, I've only seen screenshots of it. Oh, 
Good music, though. It is very good music. Okay, I'm gonna accept. <gasps> I think I see you, buddy. I don't know what my character's name is. Did you not set your name? It was like before it lets you customize your character. Oh, maybe I didn't. What does it say my character's name? Um, Subpixel01. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so, I'm right behind you. Oh, Hi. what's up, boy? Scarl I'm in the Scarlofaxi? That's not Um good. It is pronounced... Let me pull it up real quick because I forgot what, how I even spelled it. Scarlophagy, I think. Scarlophagy. Oh, I'm not... Oh, I actually clicked the right one. Why is my name Subpixel01? I don't know. Options. Oh, Greetings, I see you are a new arrival to the world of Gilinor. My job is to welcome all new visitors. So welcome. You have already learned the first thing needed to proceed in this world. Talking to other people. <laughs> I love talking. You will find many inhabitants of this world have useful things to say. By clicking on them, you can talk with them. Okay, yep, let me just... Uh, Hang on, let me go out this door. What's your experience with Old School Roots Creep? I am brand new. This is my first time here. <gasps> Did you notice that when you click your answer, you get a little... Your head shows up in the text box? Yeah, pretty dope, That's right? good stuff. I'm at Brianna already. Going to teach me how to fish. Flashing spanner icon. Display your options menu. Uh oh. Fish. Start fishing. Click on the sparkling fish spot indicated by the flashing arrow. Sorry, I need to. Uh... I'm playing this on a 4K monitor. Nice. Uh, I know I keep talking about that, but it's just everything is. Text is very small. Daddy needs bigger text. I'm catching some shrimp. <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> when you catch shrimp, it says your character's now attempting to catch some shrimp. Sit back for a moment while he does all the hard work. That's very funny. Hey, you know what? That is funny. Isn't it? Oh, I have to look at this menu. It is. Okay, sorry. I can't adjust that. Talk oh, no. to Gillen, our guide, to continue. Nice to some shrimp. Oh, wood cutting. Man, I remember there was a wood, there was a tree that everyone would cut down because you got a ton of XP from it. Oh, really? Yeah. <gasps> the mini map has a location indicator. I love that. Yeah, and you can click on it as well. Like, Daddy if you click on the map, it. you'll run to that spot. Oh, I got a fishing net. Oh, I lit this man on fire. <gasps> oh, these controls are very simple, which I, I love. Know. It's the game's very good. Played I got some so shrimp. Much. And you used to just play this in a web browser. You can play this on mobile. Yeah, my my buddy uh, I used to work with would play on his lunch break. Oh, I'm cooking. I advanced to cooking level two. Over here. Do -do -do -do. Okay, I'm moving on. In the fire. That's fine. Moving on without I, you. I think if we catch up outside of the... Oh, Ian, you know what game I beat today? What? Metal Gear Solid 4. Wow. I'm so proud of you, buddy. I went to boot up my PS3, and I was like, oh, I'll see where I am on Metal Gear Solid 4. And maybe, like, I'll start working towards it. I was going to watch some Metal Gear Scanlan to, like, re-catch up. 
I was mm-hmm. like, it'll balance out. And so I start playing. I watched an episode of Scandal this morning, and then I started playing. I was like, yeah, hey, pr- I remember being pretty far. And I, like, get past one hard part on a level. Because I, I couldn't remember control, so I, like, looked up a guide so I would at least, like, refresh. And uh, I get what, past this one part, fight a boss, and then I beat the game. Oh, really? Yeah. So you were so close. So they were like, it was lit. I was sitting on couch for three hours and did like a couple more fights, which mm-hmm. were pretty fun. And uh, yeah, I had to pee so badly the entire time. But I didn't know if I hit pause, if it would skip the cutscene or not. Uh, mm-hmm. What's Hi, up, Atticus. Atticus? We will have a great night. Thank you. I already know how to cook. Oh, my guy's so mad. I know. <laughs> you call that cooking? Get some okay. flour and water. Making dough. Made oh. some dough. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I made some bread. Oh, this is... This is a cool tutorial. Yeah. Might be the best tutorial so far. Uh, I, I think so. Ashron's Call was pretty good. Yeah, was that's Ashron's the o- only other one I was really going to bring up. Yeah. Uh, that one was really good. Oops. I might keep... Um, I've been playing, I played Factorio, and I beat nice. it. Nice. You beat I it? I think my total, yeah, my total time was about 40 hours. Nice. Yeah, I lost the thread on that game. Um, yeah, I think us not starting at the same time didn't help. I think that it's, was it, and it kind of threw me off. That's okay. Um, quest journal. I know, I'm trying to talk while also reading. Um, yeah, I, what I really like about Factorio is I feel like it's one of those long-form games, like Civilization is another example, or XCOM, where you do a single playthrough, and it's not like you're going to immediately start a new playthrough. Yeah. But you, you know that you're going to come back at some point in the future. And what I love about Factorio, I feel like with Civilization and XCOM, this doesn't happen as much is that Factorio, every time you play, you feel like you are actually better at the game. You know what I mean? Like, like you're like, oh, I learned a bunch of strategies that I'm now going to employ. Where with Civilization, it's like a little bit of that, but then it turns into that, like, do whatever you want. In XCOM, you're always like, I am doing slightly better, but I'm also still up to chance a little bit. Whereas yeah. with Factorio, it's like, no, I've got a main bus going this time. Next time it's going to be even better. You know, it took me 10 hours to do bots this time. I know next time it's only going to take me two hours because I know how to do it right. Yeah, Factory is good like that. Got a very, I, I still want to try Satisfactory. Yes, but I think we got to wait for servers. Yeah, for sure. Oh, there's mining in this. Oh, yeah, no, that's dangerous. Um, the other game I've been playing is a little game by the name of Star Wars colon oh. Jedi hyphen Fallen Order. I think it's colon. Colon, but Fallen then hyphen, Order. right? No, there's no hyphen. It's, I'm going to look it up. Star Wars. It's Star Wars Jedi... Oh, yeah, you're right. It's Star Wars Jedi colon Fallen Fallen Order. Order. Yeah. That's so stupid. That's very stupid. Um, So first, let's go to you, because you said you weren't really liking it. How far did you get? I got off the first planet, and I went to the bad planet. That's where I stopped. What bad planet? Uh, You get a choice of two planets, and I went to the Sith one, I think. Oh. Hello, Owen. And then you stopped there. Yeah. Hi, Owen. Um, so what did you not, why, why did you stop? I mostly stopped because I thought the combat was a little bit weird and, um, it, the game didn't feel very responsive. Like when I would jump up to something, you would like mm-hmm. gravitate to it rather than just 
get on it. I don't know. It's like really weird. Yeah, the platform's a little platforming is like it's like a mix between Mario platforming and Uncharted platforming. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's punishing if you miss a jump, but at the same time it keeps triggering you into animations. And it's it's real weird. Um the combat I I don't want to say I like the combat, but I like I'm taking to it a lot more than I ever did um Dark Souls games. And I think it's because of the tutorial and because they fade you into it pretty well. It's not as punishing. Yeah. Um so I, uh... I'm 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 past when you got to choose two planets, I chose the other planet. I finished that planet. I'm at the planet beyond that. And I'm now, I want to say, at least halfway done with that. Okay. Yeah, I um, I need to go back to it. I just, I, I was still working at the time, and I didn't have time to play the game. And then I was playing something else. And then I just never got back to it. So mm -hmm. I'm, uh... I want to I want to play it more. I, I in no way was like, oh, this isn't for me. I'm done with this. Um, oh, because okay. that's what I thought you were saying. It did take me a while. The first couple hours, I was not into it. Um, the story, man, that opening, that like tutorial section, that whole great. story cinematic is great. That's some good Star Wars stuff. You yeah, know, it's very good. Yeah. The terms of uh, the story kind of takes a I don't really like that your companions in a way, but that opening area is very good. Um. Also, I don't think the levels are as well designed as Dark Souls. Um, but it's still... I'm I'm kind of into it. It's also weird. I don't think you've hit this yet. But somebody somebody pointed this out in like a... I, before I start a game or shortly after I've started a game, I like to read those articles that like Polygon or Kotaku does where they're like... You know, like 10 things you should know before playing Fallen Order. Oh, yeah, and, I do that a and lot. And it's just, yeah, it's I love those because they're like, they're not spoilery, but they're like some things that are common sense. A lot of times there's things on there where they're like, hey, this is not explained very well in the game. So let me explain it to you now. Um, things like that. Um, and so they said, this is this game is not really about combat. It's more about platforming and puzzles. Mm. And it's that's I'm, as I'm playing more of it, it's definitely true. Gotcha. There's puzzles, there's platforming. Some of the puzzles are really good. Platforming is too uncharted for me, you know, where it's it's not really platforming. It's just find where they want you to climb. You yeah, know? see, I agree, and I I love like I really like uncharted like climbing and stuff like that. But I didn't think they did it as seamlessly. It was my issue with it. Yeah, and I think for me, it's it's not that it's not as seamless, which I, I think I agree with a little bit I've played of Uncharted. I just think that is bad gameplay. Yeah. Because it because it's it's not even so linear, it's so locked down. Um which I, I believe I have uh, a spotlight video for our YouTube channel coming out eventually. Around the time Uncharted around the time Last of Us Two comes out, I'm gonna be putting out an, a, a spotlight video on my problem with Naughty Dog, and I think part of it is how locked down their games are, how they're super polished and cinematic, but they don't feel like games. They feel yeah. like they feel like theme park rides where it's very polished, but it's on rails. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, I'm pretty sure you're still ahead of me. I'm combat instructor. Um, yeah, so, uh, how do I go up and down with the camera? Can, oh, there we go. Oh, well, you can zoom in and out. That's what I meant. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then up, down is angle. So, yeah, I've been playing... The main game I have been playing is Witcher 3, which I have tried to get into that game. I want to say this is my fifth time, and this is the time it actually worked. Um, I... I don't blame. I credit Symphony of the Night as the game that made me get into Witcher 3 because previously in video games, I just like, I fought things, like I, I just wanted linear stuff and I always hated in the Witcher 3 that you had to like, oh, you have to use this oil and make sure you do get these ingredients and blah, 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 blah and like get ready for a fight I really didn't like. Um, yeah. 
But then playing Symphony of the Night, you like you should put on certain armor for certain sections, and that like. Because even Dark Souls, I never did that. And Symphony of the Night, like, cracked my brain into thinking that way. So now, like, I'm doing that a bunch. I think the Witcher TV show helped a little bit. As in, like, made me want to try it again. But mm -hmm. the game's real good. The only problem now is I really want to start MGS5. But I'm going to hold off. Um, I, I've tried to get into The Witcher 3 twice now. And the problems that I had with it, well, it's, it, it, I don't think I had problems with it. It's just the first time I got past like the main cutscenes, And as soon as I got to like the village, the very, very first village, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not in the mood for this type of game right now, even though I was yeah. in on the cutscenes. Second time I tried to play it was a month ago, or actually a couple weeks ago. And I got past the village to the, the Niflgard camp when you go see the camp. And then I stopped playing. I, I just I think I just don't like that combat very much. I don't think it's bad. It's just not for me. And I yeah, also it took me. A I, I don't think. To. Yeah, and and I still don't think I'm in the mood for the combat in a game that long and investing has to hook me. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm into the story, and I liked Gwent, I'm just not gonna play it just for those things. Yeah, I, I finally got to the point where that stuff makes me stay. So yeah. Yeah, so that Witcher 3 is my main game. I played and beat Doom and Doom 2, which were really fun. Um, yeah, I think Metal Gear Solid 5 is after uh, Witcher. Oh, I did also... Uh, I was bored and I started playing Dark Souls Remastered. And I beat like the first two bosses in a session. And then I, would, like, I haven't been back to it since, so... About it. Ooh, we, speaking of that, we've got Dark Souls 2 on Thursday for some more time to die. I'm excited for that. Me too. Man, I should play it at the same time and you should summon me. No. And then I can just I think... kill you over. Or I can invade you. No. Kill you over and over again. I'm excited to see... I've never played Dark Souls 2, whereas I have played a little bit of Dark Souls 1. So I'm excited to see Dark Souls 1 experience plus Jedi Fallen Order experience. How that rolls into Dark Souls 2. As and also game. rolling properly will help too. Yeah, because I was misguided on the last one. Well, I don't want to say misguided. No, I, think I, I, I was pretty sure that realize. was... Yeah, I was pretty yeah. sure. And at the beginning of that stream, I think I had said, oh, you look a little heavy, but then I didn't think about it until the end. And I was like, oh. It was yeah, that, that's why I was barely, barely rolling. Um, Dark Souls 2 I have also never played I own it uh, but I watched my friend play it in college and the biggest thing I remember from it is that the music in the hub world is really really good like mysterious and cool magic Why am I not shooting at this guy? Oh, I need to equip the arrows. There we go. Nice. Perfect. Okay, I think I'm almost done with combat. Oh, the wind spell. Where are you going, Thunder? You guys just run around. Okay. Here we go. Look on this spell and so am I clicking on the spell or am I clicking on the Oh, is this the Bank. Oh, I'm an idiot. Forgot how spells worked. Oh, 
Oh, did you see this poll booth? How basically game updates have to be approved by the community. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. What's an Iron Man? I'm gonna go find out what wow. this is. Move through the door. Oops, that's not the right door. Okay, let me see if I can speed run through this. I think I'm going to keep playing Fallen Order. I still got some... Uh, oh my god, I I forgot about the other game I played. I uh, had a real lazy weekend. Um, Maggie had a midterm on Monday, which means she just like does absolutely nothing but studies for four days. Nice, I love studying. Yeah, so basically I do nothing as well, and it's great. Um, so I popped out my uh, VR headset and loaded up some stuff. So, um, VR games. VR games. So there's a couple I tried. Um, one of them was big screen. Have you heard of big screen VR? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. So for those of you at home, it's basically, it's a way of joining a virtual room with other strangers and there's a giant screen and the screen is playing TV. So typically it's playing like free online TV, like Pluto TV, it's playing movies. Um, there's paid movies you can go. So you like pay $4 to watch Gladiator in a big VR theater. Um, but um, it it was it was a weird experience because I, I joined some rooms and there was like 10 people in them and they're all just like chatting with each other and like heckling the screen. <laughs> and it's not it's not good. It's kind of like uh, like, you know, Reddit humor. Yes. It's like if Reddit humor was. You know how every now and then you meet somebody in the real world who is a Reddit humor personality? Yeah. So just imagine being in a virtual chat room with like five or six people like that. And they're all on mic and they're all in VR. So they're like moving their avatars around and doing stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. It's pretty bad. It's it's bad. It's not good. Um, <laughs> Sorry, this is like a multitasking. Stream. I know, uh, my brain's breaking. I, I'm on the mainland now, so when you get here, let me know. Oh, okay, well then you keep talking and I'm gonna I'm gonna stream through this. Uh, so I'm gonna fight this freaking goblin. Shooting him with arrows right now. Um, okay. Yeah, so RuneScape, I used to play it a ton as a kid. I don't know why I stopped playing it, probably because other games came out. Um, but I might actually invest some time in Mr. Subpixel 01. What did you do... Like, what was your, I don't want to say your profession, but like, what was your main activity? I did a lot of mining. I've always done a lot of mining. Uh, a lot of wood cutting. Um, I pick up these bones. And um, I don't remember what else. It was so long ago. It's like crazy how long ago it was. Uh, Wait, what's your name? Subpixel01? Yeah. It says you're offline in the friends list. It's <gasps> kind of weird. I'm not offline. Uh, I may have done misspelled it. Um, okay, so keep keep talking. I'm, I'm streamlining. Um, there's a spider attacking me now. There's also a goblin attacking me. Um, oh, I also started Kentucky Route Zero. Um, I did see you on Discord. Doing that. Yeah, that? I um, it's good. I so I bought it when it first came out, um, whenever that was five years ago, and played mm -hmm. the first act, and then I had never been back to it since. So I have replayed the first act, but I haven't dove in past that yet. Yeah, it's getting a lot of positive buzz, but it's also from the types of critics who thought Gone Home was a masterpiece. I liked Gone Home. I I thought it was okay, but I I just I think it was overrated. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like, sorry, I'm trying to spell. It's one of those things where it's like I'm not sure I can trust these critics, you know? Yeah, I get you. Um, what else? Okay, I'm heading to the mainland. Yay! I'm almost done killing this goblin. Oh, what a cool animation. 
Okay, I'm on the mainland. I'm gonna take a break real quick and talk about some other VR games that I played. Um, I played the the Lab, which was kind of the thing that shipped with the uh, the HTC Vive, mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty cool. It's got some cool stuff in it. Um, I played Rec Room. Rec Room is is like this weird. I don't want to call it cult hit because it's it's actually pretty popular, but the whole premise is that you like you like enter a friendly cartoonist gym and there's a bunch of people like it's like a rec center, so there's like you know a hangout area, there's like a little basketball area, everybody's like hanging out, and they're all talk it's all multiplayer, so they're all talking to each other and kind of goofing off. But I did play paintball in rec room because you can go and play other things, and it was a full 10 player match. And let me tell you, it was a lot of fun because yeah. the way it was was um you could teleport or use analog controls like you move the analog stick and that's how your character moves which is it's disorienting and that's how i get motion sick that's the only thing that makes me motion sick is when you're my character well it's not disorientation it's just when you're standing still but your character is moving through the world those chefs um so i can only do about 30 minutes of that right now i'm building on my tolerance but it's, it was a lot of fun because you're running around, you have these paintball guns, so they have like an arc, but they're pretty rapid fire. So you're they're still single shot. So it's like pop, 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 pop. And it's just like a small little paintball arena. And you're just running around with other people trying to shoot at them and like arc your shots to hit them. But when you, when somebody get, dies, they or not when somebody dies, when somebody gets hit, they do like a little like, oh, you got me animation and they drop their gun and then they despawn. Mm -hmm. but their gun doesn't despawn for like 30 seconds so you can <laughs> run over and pick up their gun and then you run around with dual guns that's great <laughs> so, and it was captured the black so i'm just running around going, pop, 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 and you're like you're like hiding in doorways and stuff but it was fast paced so you're just just sprinting around the arena it was, it was really good and they had grenades so you could like cook the grenades and throw them at each other um that was a lot of fun um I did have to stop that after about 20 minutes, though, because I was starting to get motion sick. Um, that was Rec Room. I th okay, I think there's... I did iRacing VR. Oh, how was that? Okay, so first of all, it is not very intuitive in terms of... It is still... You still have to use the wheel and pedals, which is not that big of a deal, because the idea is you, get in, you sit in place, and then you put the headset on. The main issue is all... Most of the settings are not visible. They are in a settings document. Mm -hmm. And then the settings that are visible are only accessible through the options menu through mouse and keyboard. So you're basically having to sit there with a VR headset and like use a mouse to navigate through the menu. Oh, weird. So I didn't get it fully set up in terms of... I was able to play and I played for about 10, 15 minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me. But... I couldn't get the like the field of view and like the seat location and all that stuff dialed in properly mm -hmm. because basically the settings I needed to tweak are in a settings document. So I would have had to like take the headset off, quit the game, change the settings document, open the game back up, put the headset on, see if it's better. And it, I, I just like, I need to go find somebody who has like a preferred settings document for the Rift S and just use that. Gotcha. Um, but that being said, I did race for about 15, 20 minutes, and it was it was really good. I I don't think I'm ready to move to it full time. There are plenty mm -hmm. of people who do that because the resolution is not quite there. And also the settings. I'm not sure if I got the settings right, if it would still be good, because I mean, you know, this with VR, there's still issues of like focusing where your eyes like still want to focus on certain things. So like if I look down at the steering wheel, it's slightly out of focus because my eyes aren't actually able to focus on that object. Oh, yeah. Things like that. Um, there's also, you, you've seen iRacing, so you know there's like there's like the progress bar at the top, which is telling you how fast you are right now in relation to your fastest lap, you know, like your 0.2 seconds slow or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's displayed on the screen as well as a couple other menus. Um, like a menu saying what gear you're in. There's another menu that tells you like there's somebody five seconds behind you, things like that. Those menus are displayed weirdly in the game. They're kind of just floating, but they kind of appear like inside the dashboard of the car. So it's like the dashboard is semi-transparent, so you can see the menu floating behind it. Mm -hmm. And I, I know I can move all that stuff, but it just feels like it would be better if they just had like 
if the game was if the game was really made for VR, then they would have a physical monitor on the dashboard, like a GPS monitor. But in that monitor would be the menus that you need. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes so, sense. So, yeah. So it's it's not quite there. All those caveats aside. Oh boy, I I don't know if I'm better, but I went in there and I played a track that was 90% a track I've already played. And I was setting fast laps immediately in Ooh. VR. Yeah, because it, it felt like I was driving. I think I've gotten better at the game, but I, I don't think I would be that good immediately outside of VR. You get the depth perception. It just feels like I was sliding all over the place, but I was able to recover more easily. And then the other thing was um, people behind me or having to join out of the pit, or if I did crash, having to join the track and making sure there's nobody around me, being able to like literally look over your right shoulder to look through your back window is incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like like literally you're turning your head as you turn into the corner or if you're you're sitting off the track and you're like, is anybody coming? You turn your head all the way to the right to look through your side window. It's it's fantastic. So that was pretty interesting. I was worried that that would get me motion sick, but it didn't. That's the <gasps> one. <sighs> that's the one that people said is Sorry. um is Sorry. most likely to get you motion sick. Yeah. And they said like put a van, uh, put a fan on your desk, pointed at your face. Oh, that's um, interesting. I didn't have to do that. Okay. It... Why is this guy fighting me? Where? Where are, are I you? Spawned in? I'm like where you spawn in on the main oh, area. Why are you fighting this guy? Here, I'll fight him. I don't know. I got kicked for being um, inactive. Someone else is fighting it. Oh, I can't attack him. Let me talk to him. Oh, okay. I'll just die. Um. So then, well, what if I what if I aggro? Yeah, run away. The game I really want to talk about in VR though is called Pavlov VR. Have you heard of this game? I have not. So that's not surprising. It's weird. It's a game that is super popular in the VR space right now. Um, so it's basically Counter-Strike VR. Oh, so yeah, so it's multiplayer. There's also some single player, there's bots. They have a couple different modes. They have like zombie, they have like, what's it called? Plant and diffuse or whatever it is with the bomb, team deathmatch, gun game. They have trouble in terrorist town. Um, it does a pretty good job of being realistic, but at the same time, like not being too realistic. So for example, your guns, you you have to reload them, but you just press a single button on your controller to drop the magazine. You put your hand at your hip and grab a new magazine, put it in the gun, oh. and then you either press a button or you touch the gun to like rack the slide. So you have to do that when you reload. But unlike other games, there are other games where they're more realistic where like, depending on what type of weapon it is, you have to manually go to like the magazine release and press that button or manually go to the slide and grab it. This one makes it a little bit easier. So it still feels realistic. Like if you have a revolver, you still have to load it shell by shell or a shotgun, you have to rack it and load it shell by shell. But it feels much, it feels like a perfect balance between realism and fun. Um, and it's multiplayer. So, so I joined a couple games there's no teleportation. It's all movement by analog sticks. So I couldn't play it for long because, again, I was getting sick. Yeah. But, like, it it's just... Did you ever play Counter-Strike? Yeah, a little bit. Not too much. So you know how, like... Well, this was kind of with any PC multiplayer shooter, probably in the, like, 2000s, where there's dedicated servers. They're They're doing, like, mods or maps that are kind of weird or unconventional. And it's just like people, like some people spamming voice chat with weird memes or jokes or music. And then people like doing sprays and it's just people like being weird and having fun with each other. Mm -hmm. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, a little bit. 
that's what this game is, but in VR. So it's like, <laughs> like pretty good. And the, your mic is on by default because most VR headsets have a mic on them. So, you know, like I was playing gun game and I'm running around and it's like you run through a doorway right as somebody else runs through it and you're like, oh! and you just like panic shoot them. And like <laughs> there's a recoil. So your gun's going everywhere. And then you're like trying to reload and you're like, oh, oh, you know, That's and it's just good. fun. Or you're like, you find a good spot and you're camped out and you're like having to like manually adjust the gun. So you get sights on people and start taking them out from a distance. Um, the thing that made me really love it, though, was I joined a server. I didn't read the description first. I just joined a server because it had nine out of ten people in it. And um, I, I load in and the server map is a recreation of the office from nice. the office. Uh, like it was almost to scale. The desks felt a little bit too tall. But it, and the hallway was like a little bit too wide, like it kind of had to be. Mm -hmm. So everything was probably scaled up about 5%, but it still felt very realistic in a way. You know, I was like, oh, I know this space. This is the conference room. This is the hallway that has the bathrooms. This That's is the break funny. room. The other thing was the map was not playing normal guns. It was knives only. No. <laughs> so, so people are running around with their knives out and which is basically just them holding it in front of them like a spear almost. Some people were able to throw it. I, I couldn't quite get the throwing animation down and it's kind of hard to do it accurately, but some people were throwing knives. But if you throw your knife, your knife's gone. So you got to go find it or find some other knife that's been dropped and reach down and pick it up off the ground. <laughs> so, so we're like running around and like this one guy on the enemy team as he's running around, would just say into his mic, <laughs> <laughs> so you're like in a VR space and you hear this noise <laughs> and it's faint and it's off in the distance and you look in the direction and you see this guy just running at you with his knife out. And you go, <laughs> then he just stabs you and you like spawn into a ghost and your dead body hits the ground. <laughs> And he was like running around and like coming up behind you. And I was like, oh, goodness me. You know, it was, yeah. it was incredible. That's pretty good. Like that's by far my best VR experience is just having that stupid Counter-Strike server shenanigans, but in VR. And like, I can't wait to play more of it. That sounds pretty oh. exciting. Yeah, I've had a pretty good week in gaming. It's not bad. Um, Whoa, wait, what's this gate? Uh, it's for probably a members area. Oh, uh, maybe? Oh, advance my wood cutting. I, um, I don't even know if I have any weapons. So I, I don't mean to be not playing the game. I'm just... Excited. About all these games I've been playing, you know? All right, I'm going to attack this guy. Yeah, so it's... VR is... It's tough. It's tough to find those games that are good and it'll hold your attention, but I think Pavlov is pretty good. iRacing, I'm not sure if I'm going to put the effort in to get it working. Mm -hmm. It's it just... Because the other thing about iRacing is it's not it's not really single player. Like, the whole point of playing it is to get to a point where you can play in a race and take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I want to play a race in VR. You know? Gotcha. There's too much, ten too much tension. Yeah. Because you want to um, be the best, uh, like best scenario to win. Yeah, exactly. I want to. I want to be in the best position. I don't want to have to worry about my, my, um, my hardware. Did I tell you how I think I need to start wearing socks or shoes or put rubber on my pedals because I noticed. As soon as the race starts, I start to sweat so much that my feet start sliding off the pedals. <laughs> nice. And it's like, I can practice for an hour and a half and I don't do that. But as soon as the race starts, I just get slippery feet. Literally slippery feet. Mm -hmm. well, I guess it's you just funny. have to pay money to over here. I don't think it is a member's area. I know over there is a member's area. Oh, I'm by the, the goblin place. Yeah, that's where I am. Do you know how to heal? Uh, just eat something. I think that heals. Oh. Me. Really oh, certain. so I can eat some bread. 
I'm gonna fight this guy. If you go and talk to that guy near where you came in, he'll give you an adventure box. And that gave me like a sword and shield and armor. Oh, well, I already got the sword and shield from the tutorial area. Right, but like I got an iron sword oh, and better stuff. armor and all sorts of stuff. Do you remember Goodies. which guy it is? Uh, he's near the. There should be fires over there that I lit. <laughs> oh, I see it. Okay, and he's on the outside. Yeah, he's outside the building. I got him. Hello, friend. Killing goblin. Yeah, this game's good. Slow. I don't remember how to do quests. I think well, you there's the quest to thing at the quests. bottom. Yeah, but to get quests, I think you have to go, like this adventure path. Yeah. Like you do all this stuff. Oh yeah. And then, like this is the combat path, but I think, I think you can also go get a quest. Yeah. So if you click on a quest on the other tabs, it'll tell you how mm -hmm. to do it. On the very first tab. So if you click on, like, Ernest the Chicken. I can start this quest by speaking to Veronica, who is outside Drainer Manor. Oh, I picked up a scroll. Oh, no, I think I'm, like, I don't want to say stuck in menus. Okay, so I clicked on the adventure paths. And then set a path and task in focus. Click the eye icon. Oh, okay, I got it. So what I'm going to do, getting started with attack. Can you do multiples of these? No. Well, maybe I you can. Know. I didn't no, actually look at any of that stuff yet. I'm just enjoying some RuneScape. Game's good. I also like that, like, you just leave it and, it, like, you're attacking. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got some... It's some magic. Oh, I'm getting sleepy on this show. I have a water rune. Oh, yeah, you can do magic at me. I just prayed. What does prayer get you? Um, oh, there's a teleport and there's a win. Oh, no, that's not prayer. That's prayer. Uh, my, mine was a buff. Oh. Mine too. It increases my defense. Thick skin. Ooh, I got some gold. I chopped down some trays. Yeah, I could see this being a nice, like, grind game, you know? Yeah, it's a good, like, podcast game. My inventory's too full. Oh, you leveled up or something. I'm attack level two. Let's kill this guy. I don't think I can fight with you. Oh, that stinks. I don't know how to add you as a friend. So... So oh, if I right-click on you, it's just report, trade with, or follow. Oops. No, I know there's the friends down here. Where is it? Friends list. Add friend. But I have to write the name. Garl O. Yes. S C A. -R yeah, I wrote your name. Backseat. Is this guy just blocking all of my oh, attacks? Oh, yeah. I added you. World 438. Message. Oh, as soon as you added me, it shows you as online now. Send your message. Private. Very private. Nobody on stream can actually see the message if you send me back. I forgot it's blocked by my camera. Uh-oh. I did a slash W. Guess that doesn't work. <laughs> no, you gotta click on me in your friends list. No, you click on me in your friends list. I already clicked on you. Okay, you want to see... We should just walk somewhere. Yeah, let's walk out these gates right here. Where'd you go? Can I come through this gate? You must pay 10 gold. Got it. 
Okay. You pay him 10 gold? Oh, I don't have enough money. You don't? Okay. I have 30 gold. Well, you probably completed quests and stuff, right? Yeah. Let's go this way. Oh, which way you're going? Oh, they got oh, horses. That way. How do you toggle run? Uh, I don't know. It's probably an auto run setting somewhere. Oh, oh yeah, I'm just it's uh, running around. up by the mini map. Yeah, there's cows over here. You can fight the cows. We should go fight cows. I really like how the world loads in. Yeah. Like, chunky. I also like that it's kind of isometric, but you have camera control. Yeah. You can see that this was free. <clears throat> I found a unicorn. Ran on a browser. That's why I played it so much as a kid. I found a unicorn. Can't run anymore. Horse with a horn. Should I attack it? No, I shouldn't attack it. Found a bear. I light a fire. Try fire making level cave. three. Gosh, that was so cool. Get down this tree. Yeah, I remember there was a willow tree that used to always everyone would fish at and cut down stuff at. And it was like worth money. So how are we feeling? I, I think we've got a pretty good taste of RuneScape. I, you know, I think this is a good, especially for 2007. This is a good, well, what time did, when did WoW come out? 2004. This game came out 2001. Oh yeah, this is just the 2007 Version. graphics package. Yeah. Yeah. This is before they so, changed it. Yeah, but for 2001, this is pretty good. Pretty good stuff right here. Really not bad, to be honest. Yeah. I want to see if oh, I can find boy. where this place was. Shall we uh, start to wrap this up? How about you find that place and I'll do the uh, intro? Perfect. Do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Subpixel. Um, as you can see, we do streams. We do them every Tuesday, Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Tonight we were doing Server Quest. This is one of our stream series. It uh, started out as an edited series, but it's going to be transitioning to a stream where basically we're going through the chronological history of MMOs, hitting all the major MMOs. This is episode eight, RuneScape. Uh, what is next week? Do you remember? Next week is um, Anarchy Online. Anarchy Online. Uh, so next Tuesday, we'll be hitting that up. This Thursday, we're continuing another stream series of ours called Time to Die. Time this is a die. series where myself, who is a complete newcomer to the uh, Soulsborne series, plays for an hour, the very first hour of each game, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, and Bloodborne. Uh, we've already done the Dark Souls 1 episode, and I believe I died 15 times in the first hour. Um, I got past the tutorial area, which took me longer than I thought it would. Um, and then I, I, I don't even want to say I was doing well against the, was it Taurus Demon? I think that's uh, yes, the Taurus Demon. I think I think the whole rolling thing and just getting blocked out by him was just too frustrating for me. So um, I felt like I was brute forcing it as opposed to actually beating it. But anyways, so Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to be playing the first hour of Dark Souls 2. Pretty excited about that. Um, I'm pretty excited. Wednesday, we've got a special stream for you, don't we? We do. We're going to be playing some Apex Legends. That's right. We played it last Thursday, just kind of on a whim. Uh, the new season's out, so we thought, why not play some more of it? Um, I did forget to mention, Will, that another game I've been playing, I, I noticed that my shooting skills are not as good as they used to be. Not that I was ever incredible, but I think it's... I, I think part of it is age, but I think a bigger part is I haven't been playing FPS shooters a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I've actually been playing a lot of Counter-Strike uh, Go, Global Offensive, and playing Gun Game because it's just a really good quick mode where it's just a lot of like quick reaction shooting with a whole bunch of different weapons um, and just trying to get better at FPSs again. So nice. I, I'm, I'm excited to take that training into Apex Legends. That's going to be 6 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Um, we also have fantastic YouTube videos, folks. We've got plenty of them. If you go to subpixelfilms.com, that takes you right to our YouTube channel. We've got great content, such as Will's two Dwarf Fortress videos, one in which True. he talks about how 
he's never played Dwarf Fortress, but he can't stop thinking about it uh, because of its reputation and the uh, the exciting premise of it. And then a follow up video where he plays Dwarf Fortress for the very first time and kind of goes through his first dozen hours or so and what he's found out, what he's liking, what he's still struggling with. And basically, that's going to be a continuing series where he's going to be playing through the story of his fortress called Oak Crafts. It's true. Um, I need to get playing it again. Honest. Yeah. Every Monday, we also have spotlight videos. That's where we do game analysis videos. The last two have actually been um, written by yours truly, edited by Jake Terrio. One about Kingdom Hearts 3 and specifically talking about the fandom of Kingdom Hearts and some of the uh, interesting questions you have in the relationship between a fan of an intellectual property and the owners of the intellectual property. Because sometimes it feels like they're taking advantage of their fans. Um, and then we also had a new video out this week that I wrote and Jake edited it as well on Yakuza and how it's one of the best open world games, even though the world itself is very small within the game. Uh, basically talking about, hey, in Yakuza, size doesn't matter. Um, we've got some other videos coming out soon, very soon, hopefully within the next week, hopefully maybe even this week, we've got a brand new short documentary out on Morristown Game Vault. It's this crazy arcade inside of a 150-year-old bank in New Jersey. We went up there a couple months ago, shot the interview, shot a bunch of footage of the, the arcade, and I think it turned out really good i'm pretty excited for that will i'm excited to see your credits sequence at the end of that it's it's, it's fantastic pretty good. it was fun um, um this is the spot that i used to always chop down these willow trees and fish uh -huh. good spot anyways that was server quest live you didn't have any more to say did you just that you can find will on twitter at hunt 270 what will what have you been tweeting about I've been tweeting about the Iowa caucus. No, I haven't. I've been tweeting about how I had to pee during the MGS4 ending. And then I also tweeted um, just how large my um, breasts are. Yep. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Think Gibson. And I've been tweeting about uh, Gunpla and model making in a way. And just kind of figuring out some weathering techniques. Um, and you can find more subpixel content on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at subpixel team. We like to post on there when we're going live, some new videos coming out, featuring some content made by other people, just a lot of good social media content. Um, I think that's pretty much going to do it for us tonight. I just died. That's a good ending. That's a good ending. Well, just everyone, that's the ending. Goodbye. I'll see Bye. you next week or tomorrow. Bye.